Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. I know there's still plenty of new content added with the current expansion. Uh, I'm working on a uh, potential Nar Udir deck to come up here in a little bit, but I'm waiting to get through the entire region rewards before I start playing any of those decks. So for today's video, I'm instead going to be bringing you guys a blast from the past, something that happened uh, back when Azir was first introduced to the game. This is Azir Hecarim Ephemeral. Now this deck I think is actually really well suited to the current metagame, given that you tend to not have a board at all times which means that your opponent's removal options, things like Avalanche and the like, don't really do a lot to this deck because of the, how many units you have that are sort of waiting in the wings that aren't there yet that your opponent can't respond to right up until you declare an attack and then everyone goes in and does damage. So it's really fun. I really like this deck. It has a neat game plan and the whole point of this is to basically take every off round as a way to play support, supporting cards and sort of prepare and then when I have the attack token do swing in with a bunch of ephemeral dudes to get a lot of damage down and then ideally end the game by turn six playing a Hecarim, flipping him and just overwhelming your opponent with a lot of ghosts in the uh, in just like one big overwhelming attack. So Let's go ahead and take a look at the card by card here. At the one mana mark, I've got two copies of Mark of the Isles and three copies of Treasure Seeker. Mark of the Isles is fun because basically everything we're playing is ephemeral anyways, so the downside of this card isn't really that big of a deal. And at one mana, a lot of people would discount the single spell mana remaining, and this can sucker punch them. Treasure Seeker is like one of the best cards in Sharima due to the fact that it replaces itself with a Waking Sands after it's been played. This means that I can play this down early to block and hold on to the Waking Sands for later and then get an Ephemeral Sandstone Charger in order to actually go to combat and do some really silly things. So really good card to have at the one mana mark. Three Emperor's Dias. This is a good way of constantly having access to an ephemeral unit to attack with in order to enable the rest of the deck in order to function. Three copies of Glimpse Beyond, and this is honestly, I know this is like the Shadow Isles staple two mana spell, which like every faction has one of these, but I'm not sure about Glimpse Beyond in this deck. It feels like there are very few units that I have left over that I want to actually Glimpse Beyond after combat happens. It's still good. It's a it's a way for me to reload my hand if I'm like in a top deck mode, for example. If I can't kill my opponent at turn six, but I don't die on the backswing, Glimpse Beyond is a way to maybe get me back in. There's some utility with doing the block something and then Glimpse Beyond it so that unit doesn't strike to deny certain strike effects, but not sure how I feel about it in this deck. I'm considering cutting it down in copies or entirely, so we'll see how it goes in this video. Three, copy, er, uh, yeah, three copies of Onslaught of Shadows here. I prefer this over the Haunted Relic because the Spectral Riders are larger, which I think is better, and because this deck has a, a problem with having too many back row units. So having only two units summoned versus three units I think is significantly better for the deck overall. Three copies of Shark Chariot, and can I just say I love how completely ridiculous this unit is. Whomever concepted this is amazing, but you all know him, you all love him, this is the cornerstone of the Ephemeral deck, because he just keeps coming back every time you go to combat and synergizes well with the other things in the deck. Really love this dude, can play him on turn 2, let him die, and then he just comes back every attack token afterwards. Three copies of Soul Shepherd makes all of my other Ephemerals bigger, which is a really nice deal for her to just sit back and give me bonuses. Three copies of the Absolver, which is the new hotness in Shirima, and works well with this deck. This deck has a problem with being uh, chump blocked out, and sort of, you have a lot of really powerful dudes, but you can't really push any damage through, and all of your dudes are going to die at the end of the round anyways. The Absolver is a good way to help close out a game because of the overwhelm that the Absolver's return gives, and this deck has a pretty easy time actually flipping champions. Um, Azir and Hecarim actually are really easy to flip in this deck, so I feel like the Absolver is pretty decent, and it's a fun combat trick as well. Three copies of Azir. Now, this is like one of the only decks that can actually flip him. This is um, Azir, Aurelia, Blade Dance is the other deck that can kind of flip him because after the nerfs, Azir is really actually hard to actually get flipped. This deck has a pretty simple time of doing it. He get, He's essentially a... Um, a Emperor's Dias on legs because I just keep getting Sand Soldiers every time uh, attacks are declared. He's got five health, so he's really resistant to removal and a good blocker. He does a lot of things that the deck really likes, so he was definitely going to be included as one of the champions. Two Darkwater Scourge. The Squid is back here, and the Squid is a bit of a brick on occasion because there are very specific scenarios in which I'm going to be playing this. I'm going to play this in situations where I need big chunks of health back. For example, if I've taken a lot of block or um, uh, taken a lot of attacks because I can't block, and then I can drop a Darkwater Scourge and hope to hopefully get a hit in to give myself some life back. Or I can play this defensively to say, hey, if you want to declare an attack, now you can't because I have a five-five with life steal that's ready to block you. It'll go away at the end of the round though, so just pass and the squid will go away. 
So it's a good way of kind of preventing my opponent from doing anything. But that said, I don't just want to run this out on turn three, because if I'm still at 20, there's no reason for me to play this card. So there are situations where I'm going to use it, but I don't want to see it in every single game. Three Iron Harbinger. I thought this card was bad for the longest time, but this deck in particular can really make this dude huge with how many ephemeral units I'm actually able to summon off of things like Emperor's Dias and Azir himself. And Iron Harbinger can get very scary. The fact that he's got Fearsome as well just makes him even better. Really fun, uh, really fun card to have and definitely a good one to play on a turn three where I don't have the attack token and then go to combat immediately afterwards, summon a bunch of ephemeral dudes and watch him get swole. Three copies of Desert's Wrath. This is a bit of a weird choice. I, I think it is a little bit suspect, but I like it because it makes my Sand Soldiers into essentially better Spectral Riders, which is kind of nice, and it gives me an immediate two Sand Soldiers if I'm desperate for an Ephemeral unit to swing with so I can actually get my Sharks back, for example. Desert's Wrath is a good choice. It does stack, so I don't care about seeing multiples of these. In a pinch, I can use this to just get a couple blockers out in that round. There are some things it does that I like, so we're going to be playing it. Then jumping up to the six mana mark, we've got three copies of Hecarim, the primary win condition of the deck. If he comes down and he flips, you're very, very likely to just win the game off the back of that due to how big your board is going to be. Obviously, he comes with two guys for free when he swings, which means he basically threatens a, le a lethal attack on an open board by himself if he's flipped. Um, but just really, really terrifying, especially if you have an Emperor's Dies and an Azir and a Shark in your graveyard, right? A lot of things that Hecarim does to just end the game. And three copies of Inspiring Marshall. Obviously, your ephemeral units are getting summoned and used that turn. You're never going to waste Inspiring Marshall's value because you're going to swing with your ephemerals, right? There's no reason not to. So being able to make them even bigger on top of something like a Hecarim swing is really fun. And that's the deck. It's pretty it's pretty consistent. It's not very surprising given what you would expect an ephemeral deck to use, but I've been having a lot of fun playing it. It's the deck I'm the most excited about right now, so we're going to bring it into some games and see how it goes. In here for game one against Turfman, playing the Nasus Thresh Slay deck, which actually has a really good uh, matchup into my deck because of how many dudes I am going to be killing this game. Uh, so if he sticks the Thresh on turn five, I'm kind of sad, but hopefully he's just dead after turn five. So we'll start off with a Treasure Seeker here, get ourselves the Waking Sands in hand, and he's got nothing, so we're in for damage here right off the bat. Love to see it happen, as any damage I can get in in the early phases of the game is actually really good for me. We've got the Shark Chariot as well. Okay, so we have the opportunity to run up the Soul Shepherd. Basically, I do nothing on my off rounds. I just kind of play my supportive units, things like Iron Harbinger or Soul Shepherd. And then on my round, ideally, I want to be swinging for damage. You never block this guy. I I'm actually a little torn about it. I feel like you never want to block him because your opponent just gets free value. Um, but at the same time, if you don't block him, you let your opponent do things like this. But that's fine, because he's got some guys for free, but the Shark is going to die anyways... I guess we're kind of handshaking on this, and he's not getting any value off of these challenges, so I'm okay with it, honestly. So now in this off round, depending on what he does, I can Desert's Wrath, and then just have a couple of blockers and make my dude stronger. That's sad. Yeah, so she's just gonna die for free, and there's really nothing I can do about that in particular. Um, if I bank the spell mana, yeah, okay. We'll Harbinger. He's going to go for a decent attack here, I would expect. I don't even care. We're just taking the damage on the chin. Because I just want to keep the remainder of my board intact here. And now, so I've got seven mana. I have two Onslaught of Shadows and a Waking Sands. So let's start going for it. I have to rem remember that there is a Shark in my grave. It's one of the things that can really screw this deck up is if you're not doing your math. Okay, this is going to give him his Thresh Flip, like, guaranteed, and he's going to get his Nasus out, which isn't great for me, but I, I feel like I kind of have to go for something. And actually, see, I've already capped out my units, so here we go. I'm going to get my Shark. There he is. And Iron Harbinger is swinging for a bunch of damage. He's basically forced to block out. We're, we're getting in for some damage, but I'm going to need to see the Hecarim if I want a shot at winning this. Fortunately, Ephemeral Units Expiring does not count as Slay, so even though he's going to get the Thresh Flip, his Nasus hopefully won't be very big. There we go. We, we give him the Thresh Flip, but I knew I was going to give him the Thresh Flip. There's basically no way for me to stop that, short of my opponent is dead on turn 5. But we're bringing that back pretty well. We'll, we'll bank the rest of the spell mana here. Emperor's Dias is kind of sad. Alright, how big is the Nasus? 
Hopefully not very. Okay, 7-7, seven, seven, that's fine, actually. I, I'm okay with this. Uh, well, 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, so let's go ahead and Dias. And then I can play the Iron Harbinger. Next turn, I can Inspiring Marshall and play a couple of the other cards here. And we basically have to end the game here, or we are going to die. Azir is a little late. So that's kind of unfortunate. No Hecarim either. No combat trick either. Um, yeah, Waking Sands. And please don't be main decking the counter spell that's in Shurima. Or I don't know. Oh, he's just going to atrocity. Well, nothing I can do about that one. That is the disadvantage. I was going to die on the backswing anyway, so I'm not as mad about it, but still hate atrocity. So either way, disappointing, but hey, that's how this deck goes. You either win fast or you lose fast because you just don't have any blocks. So we're going to go ahead and go on to game two. Here for game two against Namalama Ding Dong, playing a Riven Victor deck. Riven Blades obviously are all created cards, and therefore they can help proc Victor. This hand is... Pretty jank. Let's see if we can find any of our earlier game options. Eh, not good. Not good. But can we top deck Treasure Hunter? No. But Emperor's Dias. Okay, and he's not doing anything on turn one either, so... We can play this a little slower. So we can Dias, we can Azir, and then on the turn after that, we can Desert's Wrath and swing in with, like, a bunch of Sand Soldiers. That seems decent to me. I'm probably going to take three on this round. That's okay, though. Ooh... Six is a lot of damage to take. Fortunately, Azir is decent. Now, he could be Brother's Bond. Which means that if he doesn't play anything else, I think I just take the attack. But the fact, the fact that he's waiting tells me he maybe doesn't have it, right? Because otherwise, the correct choice is just swing out. He doesn't have it. Okay. Well, I am not going to complain about that. And there is the boy... So two turns from now, we do have the option, but we do need to swing with enough ephemeral units. He's just going to Culling Strike the Azir. There's nothing I can do about that. No mana remaining. Um, that would have been a really big attack because I would have had uh, four Sand Soldiers swinging in. We would have gotten pretty close to Hecarim's flip condition. As it is, I think we should still be able to guarantee it, though. And I would be surprised if he didn't... If he... What? Okay, Death Ray Mark 1. So he's going to take a little bit less damage, get the Death Ray into rotation. I think that's probably fine. I'm not that worried about it. Like, if, if you're going to use removal, that, that's one of the things I like about this deck, is you kind of have to use removal on dudes that are going to go away at the end of the round anyways. Um, which never feels good for opponents, but I like it personally. Yeah, okay, we're taking this damage. That's okay. I got my backup is here. And now this means that Hecarim is going to summon two dudes. Okay, yeah, that is what I expected, actually. A lot of people are playing Culling Strike nowadays, and Azir is vulnerable to that. So we're going to turn him into cards with Glimpse Beyond. Into an Emperor's Dais and an Absolver. The problem is, I need one more Ephemeral unit to actually get the Hecarim flip. Okay, Victor, and he's got zero created cards and no mana for the Hex Core either. I kind of feel like I want to be greedy. I, I kind of do because I feel like I do. Now, nah, you know what? You know what? We're going to take this a little bit slower. Just because I'm seeing all my combat tricks and not really anything else. So we can do double dias. We can play out the Iron Harbinger. Tough on the victor. Please no culling strike. Please no culling strike. That would be really sad. I Actually, I do have an answer for that. I, I, I would lose him permanently, but... Okay, so we're going to get a bunch of soldiers summoned out. He's pretty big. So I could, if I wanted to... No, because Mark of the Isles only gets me to 2 damage. Deathray, Mark 1. Okay, so he's going for the removal. So I will absolve her here. Keep, uh, keep my Harbinger alive a little bit longer. We're chipping in for a little bit of damage here, and as long as I don't die on the backswing, which I shouldn't because I will still have at least one block, um, then we can run out the Hecarim at the end of his turn and just go for an open attack. We're going to be able to summon at least four or ephemeral units. Death Ray Mark II, okay. That is the punish. So I may be forced to play the Hecarim early to have some kind of block because I might die otherwise depending on what he's able to come down with. Ooh, Scourge. Okay. 
Okay, he opened the tact. So nothing I can do about that. Down to seven. I'm just going to kind of pass here, see if he wants to play out his hand. Okay. Here's the boy. Okay, hex core. That's okay. What have you got? Regenerate. Kind of sad, but not that important, given that he's only got four health. And here we go. All of the mana for all of the combat tricks. And this is just a guaranteed Hecarim flip, so we just go to combat. Here goes Hecarim. Azir's actually flipping, too, in the background here. And he has to block out. Because he dies otherwise, this is going to be way too much damage. And now the fun part is, I have the Absolver, and the Absolver's return. So he's taking 10 automatically here. He's taking uh, another 4 from the Trample. So now you're taking 11, and you're still dead. It doesn't matter what you block. Okay, you're still dead, because you're taking 12. <laughs> he's, really, he's really trying, guys. That tells me he doesn't have anything in his hand that's giving him a hand. This is still 11. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So he sat there trying to do math and was like, oh, there's no way for me to do it. All right, no reason to block and go through the animation. Just kill me. That's how the deck is supposed to work. I'm sad it didn't happen in game one, but we got it in game two. Uh, like I said, Hecarim, like you have to see the Hecarim or the deck is like really janky to try and win with. So happy to see we were able to pull it off this time and we'll go into a game three and see if we can't keep the train rolling. Here for game three against Bored Watermelon playing the Quinn Misfortune Rally deck, uh, which that's, or Scout deck, I guess I should say, which is really sad for me. This hand is actually, like, pretty keepable. I, I don't think I'd lose anything, and he's getting a whole new hand, so I do like to see that. Hopefully he didn't get anything good. Well, coming down to Fleet Feather, uh, which is a little sad for me as well, having an early challenger to potentially challenge Soul Shepherd, but I think it's ultimately okay. So I can play Soul Shepherd on this round. Next round, we can play the Iron Harbinger, have another block. I, I actually should play the Shark to get it, just get it in rotation, but that's okay. And we do have a Squid for a little bit of life steal in order to keep ourselves alive. Yeah, he's just got a Bright Steal for no value. He did have the combo. I wasn't going to go to attacks anyways with Soul Shepherd, so. Okay, Azir actually. That does change things a little bit. He has no... Okay, so what he can do, he can challenge here with a Fleet Feather and just kill Soul Shepherd. Um, I don't think there's much I can do about that, so we will at least come down with the Azir. On the next round, I can uh, Iron Harbinger, Onslaught of Shadows, get another Soldier off of the Azir, try to chip in for some damage. Yeah, I, he could have just gone for an open attack. I don't know why he didn't swing out with everybody. Um, like, he totally could have, but I guess he was really scared of combat tricks and uh, blowing him up, so... A treasure Seeker as well. Does this change anything? I don't really think so. Unless what I wanted to do is try to play this a little slower. Um, I think Shark happens. I, I'm pretty sure I always play Shark here. Okay, yeah. I, I do think we need to do this. Uh, that's probably more valuable later. So I think what we do is we just go, we, we play it a little bit slower. Probably on the next round we run out of squid just to have a defensive option. We get in for a little bit of damage here. Okay, yeah, and he's, he's actually going to take all these blocks, so that's okay. And I, I'm not going to play this because I do want to, I do want the unit damage, and I also want to bank the remaining spell mana. I think having his units chipped out is pretty good. I do have the option of playing this as well defensively, just to get a 5-2. Very few opponents will actually ever want to swing into the 5-2. Okay, Blinding Assault to get the Valor down. So you do have a Scout. Potentially you could be killing the Azir here. Um, I will Squid though, and see if he still wants to go to combat. I, I'm expecting Combat Trick. Okay, yeah, there's the Sharp Sight. Um, so Azir is actually dead here. So we are going to glimpse the Azir. Seems to be why we're running the glimpse beyond is to kill Azir specifically. Uh, but either way, so Azir is going to turn himself into cards. Can we find the Hecarim off of this? No, we can't. Desert's Wrath is a little unfortunate. I would expect to pass here, honestly. He's going to go back in. I guess you know you can remove a unit. This is two attacks for Misfortune. 
And if you don't swing with anything else, so really what I'm doing here with the squid is just mitigating damage. Like, yeah, I, I knew the squid was going to die, that's okay. Little do they know I have my backup squid in hand. So I think the optimal play is probably Onslaught into Desert's Wrath. Go for... Well, I, I do need to bring up the squid. Because I need some kind of lifesteal. We might still be dead to the Misfortune, actually, on the next round. Which I'm not a fan of. It may... I, eh, okay. We still squid. I think we still squid. I believe this is correct. See if he wants to do anything in response. Okay, and I'm going to now Waking Sands. And so the plan is, the plan is on the next round, if he doesn't open attack, or if he does, like, just with his scouts, we can block. Um, then we can, we can play the Iron Harbinger to block. I think I'm still dead, actually, here, depending on how much healing I get off of uh, Darkwater Scourge. Depending on how much damage he's got on board, I guess I should say. Four mana, he's playing two spells. Okay, Ranger's Resolve to let him block out a little bit better. Oh, I didn't even comprehend that that was a Draven's biggest fan, that's funny. Okay, so we're still, this is still dying. Make It Rain is going to remove, actually, two of my, oh uh, no, just, uh, just one of my guys. But it's okay, because he was going to die without doing any damage. Anyways. Um... How much damage does he have on board? I think enough to be lethal over two attacks. Oh no, Misfortune Flip. Uh, I think I'm dead. Hold on. I'm going to take three off of this automatically, plus the six. So I'm taking nine. Okay. Um, let's go for two blocks over one. If I don't die to this, I think we have a good chance at winning the game. But I have to not die to this. Oh, he still has four Demacia. Yep, yep, that's going to be it. <laughs> I don't know how I forgot he had that in hand. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing I can do about that one, unfortunately. That deck was going to come out harder and faster, and I still didn't see the Akram again. So, Which, I don't know if that would have made a difference. It would have given me better hope for like the later stages of the game, but... Ah, well, that, that, that comes down really, really fast. So either way, we're going to go ahead and hop into a game four here, see if we can at least end the day on even odds. Here in game four against Elk Poeria, playing Soraka Gallio Healing. That is so many Emperor's Diocese that I do not want to see. And that hand is even worse, but that's okay. Uh, this deck shouldn't come out very fast. It pro His deck probably actually isn't playing Starspring. Um, you, don't, you don't need it in Gallio Soraka. Oh, Hound turn one. Well... Getting punched for two. This is payback for the last video where I did this to a lot of people. But So either way, it, it shouldn't come out that fast. It doesn't have Star Spring to really capitalize on all of the attacks I'm doing. So I do have a bit of ability to sit back, kind of play some spells, bank some mana, wait for Hecarim. Uh, sadly, we c I don't think we can flip Hecarim in a single round of combat. He's just open attacking. Okay, he's just going to try and get in for five. It is a big boy. This is a beefy boy, especially because he'll get another plus two at the end of the next round. That's okay. That is all right by me. We're straight chillin'. Let's go ahead and start swinging, because we need to do this at least once for the Hecarim flip. Because we can reliably get four Ephemerals out when on with Hecarim on the attack, but that means you still have three more to go. Okay, broad-backed. And get another Sand Soldier, who's also a 2-1. And I'm alright, because this is going to chip off some of the health off of both of these guys. They're both very health-dependent units. I maybe could have done something silly like double Mark of the Isles just to kill a guy, but I'm alright with playing this a little slow. Just kind of getting chipping in for some unit damage. He's going to heal off all the damage I did, but this dude's taking some damage at least. He should die on the next round as well. Mountain Drake. So I will play the Waking Sands here defensively. Because I do I do have options of dealing with a Mountain Drake if he goes in. If he does swing, I know he's got a combat trick. Oh, okay, okay. So he has nothing. So we'll Shark Chariot. Yes, I can't attack with Shark Chariot this turn. No, it can't block. And yes, it does die. But it's in the graveyard now. For me to get it back later when I start swinging. Hecker him off the top. 
Damn it. All right, whatever. That's fine. We're seeing all the all the spells and none of the units. This deck performs so much better in testing. Uh, that's okay, though. Okay, so in with these guys, we get a Sand Soldier and we get the Shark back. He is on six mana. There are some things like Astral Infusion he could play, which are just going to make me cry. Okay. He may not actually have a combat trick. Okay. Uh, Guiding Touch to keep him alive through the hit, but he'll die at the end of the next turn as is. So what we're going to do here is we'll... Um, hmm. How do I want to do this? Okay, we'll mark the Isles here. I think that's always happening. We'll absolve her here. And we'll mark the Isles, just to try and remove his guy. And then we're going to glimpse beyond and hope we see a Hecarim. Because it doesn't matter if Shark Chariot dies, I'll just have it back in the graveyard. So see if he's got anything else. He could, it's still Astral Infusion. That's a 4 mana card. He's got the 4 mana. Um, doesn't help the Mountain Drake at all, of course. But he could play out on one of his other dudes fully heal and give another four health is really obscene in the formidable like that's it's the reason you play this with targon okay so you're gonna go for that that's fine um we're still gonna get in for some damage against that dude inspiring marshal and iron harbinger no hecker no azir either I'm, I'm surprised i think we've seen azir in almost every game we played tonight so far but haven't seen him yet this game i forgot he no longer triggers if he would die to it Okay, and into the Soraka. Um, hmm. I need to not die, but I also do want this for a bigger attack on the later turn. Let's Harbinger. He does die to Broadwing, but I do have the option of uh, Absolvering him. Oh, he's actually not even going to uh, block that way. Okay. Take uh, seven. Totally fine. Yeah, I think the only time Broadback Protector dies is if he has exactly three health um, when you when he goes to trigger his effect. Otherwise, he he won't go below that. Oh, he's also at twenty. Oh, duh. And that's like the worst top deck I could have had. Second Inspiring Marshal. Uh, like they do stack, but you can't play more than one in a round. Uh, so I I think realistically the only thing I can do is try to ch uh, chip out his uh, dudes as much as possible on this round. Hilariously, actually, they can't block Iron Harbinger. Nothing he has can block Iron Harbinger. And now we have three damage Sand Soldiers. They're going to be five damage apiece because of the Inspiring Marshal. So here we go. One more Sand Soldier plus the Shark. They're all going to be really big. Sadly, they're just not big enough to kill the Mountain Drakes, but we do at least chump out their damage by quite a bit. He can afford to take this. Oh, hush to make it so that you can block. That's actually pretty bad for me. Okay, in for five with the Shark, but we are losing another blocker we have on the backswing. He can afford to take 10. He'll heal up 3 on the next round. I might be dead to an open attack. Okay. Got him down to 9, but I think that's as good as we're going to get. He is main decking Star Spring. Wow, that surprises me. Like, I guess you can. You get the Soraka flip here as well. So, you do have the ability to fully heal one of your Mountain Drakes. Um... So I think that's probably going to be what kills me, is all of the healing that you're getting overall. Hecarim, you are a turn too late. Yeah, he's just he's just going to go for the open attack. And I, I, I died of that, so... Ding! Ding! Can't believe we weren't able to get it. We're, I'm going to go back in for one more. These games are pretty quick. I, I want to see the Hecarim more than once tonight. So let's, let's do a game five here. Let's see if we can't pull it off. Time for that all-important Game 5 against Gibshot, playing a Championless Bandle Piltover deck. Anytime you see Championless, it's pretty safe to assume it is something degenerate, but we're at least seeing the Treasure Seeker off the bat. This is a pretty okay hand. Emperor's Dias off the top would be pretty nice, uh, but there's a Hecarim, and I literally can't complain. I've been asking to see him, like, every single game, and I finally do get to see him, so... All right, so we can bank the two mana on this round. We're just going to go in. I would be surprised if she survived. 
Yep, there's the pokey stick, but at least we're keeping Om off of playing... Oh, I could have totally... Alright, well, playing fast and loose this game, I guess. So we can bring up the Azir on this round, give us a block. We have a backup Azir for when our first Azir inevitably gets removed. Trinket trade for the Manifest. Oh no, for the Otterpus. Okay. So we have Azir at least to block with, but we're gonna get Pranked. Which hilariously doesn't have a big effect on this deck because it's all spells. It's like literally all spells. Which like, yeah, you can give them increased cost, but like, you know, like can't block and stuff like that. Don't really do anything to it. Okay, so into the Iron Harbinger. This is pretty nice. So I can Harbinger, I can Onslaught, and we can swing in with a bunch of Ephemeral dudes. Plus, obviously, the Harbinger, who can't be blocked by the Otterpus. He's going to go get a Fey real quick. Oh, is this a Fey focus deck? Okay, and then into Loping Telescope to go get other Fey. So There's a lot of stuff I'm actually still learning about the uh, the new like card pool. Like Fey is one of those things that I've seen a couple of times, but never do particularly well. So I I'm assuming this guy has some kind of strategy that he's like a, a big fan of as far as Fey goes. Okay. So we do have this Arise as well if we need it. Okay, into the Serpent, but you still... Uh, you do have a block because you do have the Loping Telescope. Summon another Sand Soldier, though, and we're potentially in for five unless you lose the Telescope. And anyone else is going to die to getting hit by Elusives, so, or Ephemerals. So he looks like he's going to block out at least a little bit here. Three mana available as well. Could have, like... Okay, keeping the Snake. That tells me he may have, like, Group Shot or something to try and remove the Azir on the backswing. I think that does, like, four damage if you have four or more allies. Something silly like that. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. New card set. I'm, like, excited, actually, about uh, seeing the new stuff. Okay, go for another face Sprout to get another bumped-up dude. Might go for another Telescope, because he's just going to replace himself. Grandfather Fey. Create an Owl Cat. Oh, he's a Battlesmith for Fey. Hate that. But I don't think there's a lot I can do about that, strictly speaking. Snake goes in. Okay, and here's where we glimpse beyond. Go turn him into cards. Ideally, I want to see something else that, like a, like a um, Onslaught of Shadows would be really nice. Okay, and he's going to Mystic Shot here to keep me from getting cards. Eh. Dislike that, but depending on what we pull off the top, I'm okay. Into Onslaught of Shadows. Do love that. Okay, no Mini Morph. Do not Mini Morph me, bro. Okay, Wallop to buy himself time to see it coming. That's fair. Uh, do I want to... Yeah, because I have the Hecarim's Onslaught <coughs> in hand, so I don't have to worry about playing this now. I just want to keep trying to put the pressure on before he has the option. If he's playing like all of this defensive stuff, like that's okay. Okay, Owlcat for a free block. See if we can... Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna force him to take some damage, try and trade out a little bit. The fun part about Sand Soldiers is that they, they always do two damage, which makes them just as lethal as Spectral Riders if they're not blocked, um, which is like a really fun little aspect of them. And then if you, obviously if you're able to play something like Desert's Wrath, they get even better. Plaza Guardian. Oh no. Squid can't even strike against that guy. I think we still... Okay, on this turn... Depending on what he's got, we can squid for a block and then shark chariot main two. And then that means we can open attack on the next round. Flip Hecarim. Hopefully kill my opponent. Oh, he's digging. He's digging. No, that's in I was I was thinking for a sec he could be trying to play um like mind meld. Oh, go get another one though. Oh. Okay, that is a little spooky. Okay, and yeah, see, he's just gonna pass. So, uh, let me use Shark. Now he wants to attack. Okay. That's actually fine. Um, I, I will block with the Shark. It was gonna go away at the end, or the Squid, which was gonna go away at the end of the round anyways. So now, because I'm at 6 out of 7, I... Ooh. How greedy do I want to get? I'm gonna greed. Alright, Soul Shepherd. Oh, that flips to my Zier. Okay, yeah, that was worth it. <laughs> All right, so now we have the Azir online, and he's going to make all of my ephemerals even bigger as they go in. 
And now I have to start doing some math, though. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right, so now we... Um, Waking Sands is probably the better choice, given that I'm going to get a bunch of dudes. Oh, Karina Veraza. I should have known. How many spells? All five? Oh no, only three. Okay. That kills... That does not actually do that much damage to me. Huh. I'm okay with this. Um, Hecarim's Onslaught of Shadows. Sure. What else you got? Another wallop! No! I needed that! That's actually really unfortunate. Uh, can I even go to attacks here? Like, I can. I don't really have any good attacks. We flip Hecarim. Oh, we do flip Hecarim! So we do make all of my ephemerals large regardless. I don't have Hecarim, of course, but... This is still, like, lethal. He has to kind of block out here. And I have the Azir's Arise in hand in order to, like, make myself a defense force if absolutely necessary. So I think we have a chance at not winning here, but not dying either. He's going to be able to keep most of his Plaza Guardians. Okay, but we're, we're chipping in for a bunch of damage on his expensive dudes. We still technically have the Hecarim to block with. Oh, he's gonna... Okay, he's trying to maintain Karina. Probably because he has, like, another transposition or something to, like, replay her and try to, like, go for another, like, big explosion. Um, which, again, isn't as useful into this deck as it could be against other decks because most of my units don't exist until I go to combat. Okay, so he's got four dudes. I have four slots available with Arise and enough mana to play it four times. Okay, he's gonna challenge Azir... That's okay. No, he's not. He's going to challenge Hecarim because he has some other way of dealing damage to Hecarim to try and kill the Hecarim. No, he wants the Azir. Alright, bud. Which one? Okay. Alright. Arise. Oh, that's really funny. Yeah, I still get my Hecarim effect. Um, and because he challenged, I don't actually have to play this as many times as I wanted, so I do have the option of going for Emperor's Dias afterwards as well. As long as he doesn't have anything that gives Overwhelm, I think we're okay. That's really silly. I didn't realize... You never see Hecarim's, like, effect on the defense because Hecarim always just kind of, like... you. He either dies as he comes down or you swing with him and the game ends. Okay, cool. Well, uh, here we go. I Literally, we just... Uh, oh, okay. Agreed. Hecarim makes two. Azir makes one. Dias makes one. And I have a shark. Uh, yeah. I think I'm wasting a little bit here. I am wasting a Spectral Rider, and I'm not getting my shark. That's okay, though. We're in for a bunch of damage. He's dead. Unless he's got... Uh, what would what would make me really sad here? I guess Hecarim's not trampling. Okay, Trail of Evidence. He's looking for an answer. No Mystic Shot, please. We got it. We got it. We're in there. No, wait, Hecarim dies! Wait! <laughs> oh no, I can't do math! I forgot how that works. <laughs> uh, okay, scrap dash for two. That's fine. Um, what do I need off the top? I need, like, another Hecarim. That's a useless card. Okay, trinket trade for an Otterpus. Or, I guess, for anything else. You don't really need the Otter Post. Pokey stick me for one. He's, I, I guess he's just trying to like dig for answers himself, but he's got a much better hand advantage here. Okay, time trick to go tutor for something. How many cards is he at? 15 left. Oh my god. Wait, he's really turboed through there. Oh, I guess he did obliterate five cards off of Karina Veraza, so that does explain some of it. Still at the 8 mana for Karina. Oh, progress day for another 3. Which he probably won't be able to play. I absolutely need to see, like, a Hecarim or something. Which I have... I still have 2 Hecarims and 2 Azirs in the deck. Okay, do you want to... Yeah, there's, there's no reason for you to not attack here. 
Shark. Oh, okay, okay. It's a unit. It is a unit. That's important. Because I have another shark in grave. Oh, no. Uh, well, we might lose to this. Depending on how many spells, it's four spells. So I'm taking four. Shark is dead, of course. And that's why I didn't bother playing Mark, because I, he's, his deck is stacked with spells. Uh, I'm dead to an open attack, barring not that. <laughs> okay, well, I got a little ahead of myself. I think I might have had it. I, I, I'd have to watch this back to see exactly what I did wrong there. Um, but, like, that is the disadvantage with Hecarim, is that he has to swing first before he summons any guys. And because of this, then he dies first, and then all of his dudes get weaker. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a way to play that better. I think there might have been. I'd have to look it back. But either way, I like this deck in part because I don't really care if I lose. This deck is very coin flip. You either, like, can get the, the Hecarim in and do a bunch of damage and kill your opponent around six, or you don't kill them, and then you die on the backswing because you have no units because they were all ephemeral. So it's a super fun deck. I really like this. I know my record today was, like, not good, but, like, I don't care. It's fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this too. If you have any suggestions to make the deck better or notice any misplays that I made, let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear about it. And let me know what you guys are playing in Legends of Runeterra right now. I'd love to hear about it. And maybe there's a deck there that I want to try myself. If you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and leave it a like. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.